debate and the decision on a proposal to hike sales taxes on recreational marijuana highlighted the latest Durango City Council meeting. Hello, I'm Dean Brookie, Mayor and Durango City Councilor. Council Connection is designed to give you a snapshot of the happenings at the most recent City Council meeting. This time we look at the July 21st meeting. One of the first items is the consent agenda, which is intended to allow City Council, by a single motion, to approve matters that are considered routine or non-controversial. There's usually no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen requests an item be removed and considered separately. One item, adopting a sustainability action plan for the city, was removed by Councillor Dick White. It is a very, very extensive uh, piece of work calling for sustainability actions across city departments. And I think one of the things that I find most impressive about it is the commitment of staff to do uh, a sort of uh, eliminate uh, barriers across uh, city departments so that people communicate and work towards common goals and I think it's uh, it will serve us very very well it also gives us a benchmark for the community to examine what the city is doing and uh, I have every expectation we will live up to the to the uh, community's expectations but I think having this on the record I think is a really big step forward Public participation centered around comments from a number of individuals about possible amendments to the Land Use Development Code. We had one quasi-judicial hearing on a minor subdivision and setback variance in Three Springs. Councilors also held a legislative hearing on adoption of the 2012 International Codes, covering such things as building, fire, energy conservation, and residential construction. Most of the meetings centered on a proposal to place a sales tax issue on the November ballot. It would ask voters to approve a 5% sales tax on recreational marijuana sales in Durango. Proceeds of that tax, estimated at $900,000 per year, would be used to address repair and replacement of up to seven aging city buildings, including the police department, the Carnegie Building, Old River City Hall, and the current city hall. No one testified before the council in favor of the tax, 14 individuals, mostly representing local recreational marijuana businesses, spoke against the tax, citing a variety of reasons. Currently, between a city and state level, marijuana businesses are being taxed at 17.9%. We also know that um, on an excise level, we're being taxed at 15%. There's not another industry that I know of in the state or in the nation who's paying the, the same percentages of taxes that we are currently paying right now. One of the things that Mr. LeBlanc left out in his PowerPoint was the fact that um, 50, the, the state has already co uh, collected in excess of $58 million in tax revenue generated solely from the marijuana industry. At this point right now, because of Tabor, you know, they, they would have to give that back. Um, you know, this, this is going go to this is gonna go to the ballot, and you know, I think in all likelihood, um, you know, the, the people at the, during the next election are gonna, um, are gonna allow the state to keep that money. So that's $58 million worth of money that is gonna be going back into the state. Um, this would never be happening with any other industry on the face of the planet. If you owned a brewery, if you were in real estate and building like these people were just discussing, this would be an absolute insult to anybody in the community. And it, it would never be stood for. There's absolutely no precedence whatsoever in the city's history for a tax rate on this kind of level. When voters approved Amendment 64, they intended for retail marijuana to be treated comparable to alcohol. However, this equality has never been the case, and the 5% tax initiative takes us further away from that equality. It is my understanding that alcohol is currently taxed at 7.9% in Durango. This is already 10% lower than the tax rate on retail marijuana and will be 15% lower if your proposed tax initiative is passed. Um, I think taxation is an easy way, a quick fix, um, to kick the problem down the road and has short-term benefits but possibly long-term consequences that we don't realize. Um, <clears throat> I think specifically taxing a specific industry as such an increase sends a terrible message <coughs> to all the business owners in the community. My concern for myself personally is what next? If I have a good year at the bar, do I have to start paying for new things in the community? Um, what about the breweries in town? What about the bike shops in town? What about the coffee shops in town? Um, what next? Do we just put it to a vote and have a referendum and say, hey, we're going to change our mind as voters and go after these taxes? 
RM Labs does safety testing on recreational marijuana. And so any burden extra on this fledgling industry is not good. And I know that we have to charge them money um, for our services and it keeps marijuana safe. So if you put a tax on them and people go to black market, then they don't come to me. And then they don't know if their product is safe, if the potency is the same every single time. So I just want you to consider that unintended consequence. Really, after hearing everybody else speak um, so intelligently and articulately, I, I can't imagine that you guys would move forward with this tax. I think if the city council does, it shows a direct attack on the marijuana industry. Uh, you've heard from everyone here, I mean, no one else pays 17.9%. We do. There's never been a 5% sales tax increase on anything in the city of Durango but you want to put it on the one industry that pays the highest sales tax already. After lengthy discussion, counselors decided to take a step back and look more closely at city building needs and ways to fund improvements. I think the city always gains by hearing all sides of an issue. Uh, unfortunately, my job is uh, frequently to present things that are not popular. And I guess if the vote were taken tonight, you guys would not vote me man of the year. Um, but I have to do what I think is right for the whole community. And I think we've, we've exhausted our options on how to fund future capital improvements. Our facilities that are in a huge need, um, that's no doubt. I think anybody can see that. And I, I welcome anybody to take any tours. Our facilities are in a huge need. But I don't think that... Um, you know, one industry should bear the burden of that. I think that everybody in this community benefits from those city facilities, and it sh and, and I want to figure out a way that we can look at um, how do we meet those needs, how do we serve the community, and how does everyone contribute equally? You know, to cherry pick the low-hanging fruit, you know, of, of a new industry is is maybe a little premature right now, because uh, I'm not not because. Uh, you know, it's we, we can't do it, and I don't, th and and it wouldn't gain voter support because I do think the predominance of folks in the, our community would vote for this. The police department <clears throat> really is abysmal, and I would love to see it sold and move someplace else, and that torn down and redeveloped into some great commercial entity. Um, and that may happen in the future, and it, that future may be many years from here. Um, but I don't think that it should be on the back of one industry uh, also. Uh, the vote was unanimous, 5-0 to not put the tax on the November ballot. A final legislative public hearing was held to put a question on the November ballot asking if the city should opt out of the Senate Bill 152. That state law forbids local governments from directly or indirectly providing cable television service, telecommunication service, or advanced services such as high-speed internet services. Many communities, including Durango, have invested heavily in fiber optic technology. A yes vote on this issue would allow the city to form partnerships to make those assets available to the community. During the meeting, counselors also mentioned several events you might find interesting. Among these, I noted that a young man who is blind is in the midst of hiking the Colorado Trail from Denver to Durango. Trevor Thomas, seen here hiking the Appalachian Trail, is due to arrive in Durango around July 30th. A welcome party is being scheduled for him. You can find out more about those plans and his adventures by going online to blindhikertrevorthomas.com. Council next meets for a study session Tuesday, July 28th. Expected topics include the results of a facilities master plan looking at future building needs for the city. Our next regular meeting is August 4th. And that's Council Connection for the July 21st Durango City Council meeting. I'm City Councilor and Mayor Dean Brookie. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you can always contact your City Councilors via email at citycouncil at durangogov.org.